Hi guys, welcome back to My Wine Diary, the channel where everything is related to wine. Today we will be talking about something that I would no doubt make for every friends or family gathering or party that I have in my house, and that is a charcuterie board and how to build one. Now for me personally, a charcuterie board is so much more than just a bunch of meats and cheeses on the plate. For me, I look at it as a culinary adventure with all of the foods and accents on that charcuterie board combined with all of the different wines that we're pairing that food with, it really creates a truly unique experience for you and your guests. <clears throat> the word charcuterie or charcuterie itself comes from two French words. One is the word char, which means meat or flesh, and the second one is the word cuit, which means cooked. So technically together they would mean cooked meat or cooked flesh, so you get the gist of what the word means. The wonderful thing about charcuterie boards for me is of course their versatility. You can mix and match a whole bunch of flavors or you can focus on one particular region or style. So before you start building a charcuterie board for your guests or for yourself, I suggest that you ask yourself a couple of simple questions. Question number one is, is there a specific theme, specific style or region of the world maybe that you will be focusing on building that charcuterie board or are you going to mix and match? Question number two, very important question is, are there any dietary restrictions in the group of people you will be feeding that charcuterie board to? Uh, other questions are kind of secondary, but a lot of people ask, do you go with more, do you go with less? How much of everything do you actually need? And here I say the variety is great, but usually I go with less than what I originally thought I needed, just because you can always refill things. So you can always pull something out of the fridge and add to your board as you go. Go with less and you can always add a little bit more. Now, charcuterie boards are not only about food. They are about visual presentation just as much, if not even more. So placing everything on the board in a beautiful manner is a very important part of building a charcuterie board. But before I show you how I'm going to build my charcuterie board right in front of the camera here and show you all of the products I'm going to use, I want to focus on the board itself. So do we invest into an expensive charcuterie board? Do we use something that we have around the house? It's completely up to you. So if you have a nice looking cutting board, you can use a nice cutting board. A lot of them are made of wood right now. A lot of them are made of quartz or granite, so use those. If you don't have anything around, just use plates. That's totally fine too. I so happen to receive a beautiful gift from one of my family members for, I believe Christmas or house buying, something like that. And it was this charcuterie board here, which I absolutely love. Uh, it's got some ridges going all around it, perfect for condiments. So you can put little things around here. And then the main part is slightly elevated and it's wooden, of course, it's a pretty heavy board. Now, if you pull this compartment out, you can see how different tools are available for us too. So some of them are for spreadables, some of them are just knives. This is a fork looking thing for picking up a certain item. So very, very convenient. I, of course, don't know where my family member got this one for me from, but I will link something similar down below for you. So as I'm now getting ready to show you what products I'm going to use for my charcuterie board, I'm going to add one last disclaimer to this video, and that is I am not going to use a lot of meat. So a lot of times people use a lot of meats for their charcuterie boards. Our family is split here. Uh, my fiance is a meat eater. I am not. So when we build our charcuterie boards, we try to be respectful to both parties. So I go a little heavier on cheeses and all of the accents, and then we add just a few types of meat as well. So for instance, in a I guess a traditional way of building a charcuterie board, you would add some hard meat, hard cooked meat that you would need to slice and cut. I don't have that just because it's not really something we normally go for, but feel free to get something like that. Maybe some sausage, you know, something cooked, uh, definitely should be present in your traditional charcuterie board, but mine won't have it. So let's start. Uh, the first thing that I want to show you that I will be putting on my charcuterie board is this trilogy of meats here and I have uh, salami here, I have prosciutto in the middle and I have capocollo which is uh, pork all uh, in this one package here. Now these are all cured meats so remember they're not your cooked meats but they are super popular in a charcuterie board. 
Next up are, of course, our cheeses. I absolutely love cheese, and normally I put more than just a couple of kinds on my charcuterie board, but for today's video, I'm using this Asiago with rosemary on the ridge of it. This is one of our absolute most favorite cheeses from Trader Joe's. And then I'm also using a softer cheese, which will be this brie. It could be spreadable. So spreadable something is a part of every charcuterie board, so I'm adding this brie there as well. Now, as a part of spreadable items, I also have this truffle pate that I will be adding to the board as well to use on crackers or uh, just eat with a little spoon. As I have already mentioned once in this video, accents or everything else besides your meats, cheeses, and spreadable items are my favorite part of a charcuterie board and I have a lot of different things here. So I'll start with something pickled. I love everything pickled everything pickled, everything that I've tried at least. And so here I have my kosher dills and I have some a mild okra that's pickled as well. So I'll be adding that. Now I also of course have to have some sort of cracker on this board. Uh, you can have regular bread of your choice. If you have some fancy artisan bread, you can put that on your charcuterie board as well. I usually like to use crackers that are kind of tasteless that will just be the vessel for us to experience the spreadables and put some meat on as well without overwhelming the food that we're putting on them. So I try to step away from like cheese crusted crackers or something that has berries in it. So I go with the simple kind. Next one up here, right after crackers, which of course will add some crunch to our charcuterie board, some texture to it. I have some nuts and I'm going with sliced almonds today only because that's what I had in the house. Honestly, any nuts would do. If you have pistachios, you have cashews, any kind of nut, uh, pecans will go great on a charcuterie board. So anything you have, feel free to place it on there. They add some texture, they add some crunchiness to your charcuterie board, they work really well. I like to spruce up my charcuterie boards with a little color of berries as well. Berries add some freshness, something uh, completely different that you wouldn't normally expect from a charcuterie board or drinking with wine, for instance. So for my charcuterie board today, I am using some uh, raspberries here. Coming on the tail end of the ingredients here, I have some uh, condiments, I guess you can call them, but both of them are sweet. So first of all, I have honey because I think that a lot of cheeses go extremely well with honey on the cracker. And then I also have this Florida jalapeno jam. This is something that we actually got from a local winery and I absolutely love this jam. I feel like we will need to go back to the winery. Uh, it's from the Bunker Hill Winery in Florida. If if you're ever in Florida, please visit Bunker Hill, family owned, awesome winery. So this is the jam that we got there. Let me see if I can show you the label. It's got pieces of jalapeno in it. And normally I am a wimp when it comes to spicy food, but this jam, it just adds a little something extra and I can handle it surprisingly so. Garnish is something that I think you should not skip on your charcuterie board. So for our garnish, I'm choosing something seasonal just because we're in the midst of the holiday season. So I have uh, fresh cranberries here. Whoops, one just fell. <laughs> Uh, this is something I'm not going to be advertising as an edible item on my charcuterie board, but they will add some festivity to the board itself. And then I have rosemary because it kind of looks like pine tree or fir tree or Christmas tree, whatever you want to call it. So together, I think they look very festive. They look like Christmas and I love it. Last but not least, before we move on, I always recommend that you add a little bit of um, large granules of salt on your charcuterie board and also some pepper or at least have your salt and pepper shaker nearby just in case if people want to add that on the food that they're trying. Now that you guys seen all of the ingredients that I have in front of me, I'm going to tilt the camera down and start building my board with you. All right, everyone. So now that our board is in front of us, we are ready to start building it. So let's start in the order that most websites and most um, guides to build a charcuterie board start and that is with our meat. So here I have the selection of the meat that I showed you earlier and because it is only for my fiance, since I don't need any meat, I will only put a few pieces of each on the plate. 
I wish I could show you my dog Wolfgang who is sniffing all over the table right now. Nobody, you're not getting anything. All right, so as I am getting some pieces out here, prosciutto, as you know, comes as this like big long piece. So I'm going to roll it just because it's easier, I think. Now, if you do have people who are super particular about their uh, meats not touching anything else on the plate, so for instance, some uh, vegetarians will not like it to be touching the cheese, then of course make sure that there is nothing around um, that, that will be touching the meat essentially that people will not eat afterwards. I do not care if something touched the meat. I'm not that particular, so I can put my cheese right next to my meats as well. So here I already pre-cut my brie and my um, hard cheese as well, my Asiago, so I'm going to start placing it around. Now, one advice that I would certainly give you is just to make sure to avoid like, um, edges or any ugly pieces from whatever you're cutting. Like with this cheese, you know, it's just hard cheese, so it fell uh, fell apart as I was cutting it. But you know what I mean. Like if there's something that's not edible on the ridges, for instance, make sure not to put it on your charcuterie board, of course. I had to move my tools here to the side because I'm now getting ready to put my pate here in the corner. So let's see. Again, it's only for him. Normally I would go with like two slices of everything per person uh, because it's just me and him. I think I don't need that much. So with my pate, I'm going to put it maybe like this, you know, just kind of look and see what looks okay. And then of course people will be able to to use the tools to spread it on their crackers too. So speaking of the crackers, let's talk about the crackers here. We're about now ready to put those crackers on the table. The rule of thumb that I have with crackers is to make sure that they're not touching anything liquid. So we have some pickled items here. Make sure that uh, your crackers are not gonna get soggy touching the wet items. So what I like to do, and this is what I like this board for, it's got ridges. So I like placing my crackers on the ridges. this. If you don't have enough crackers or if people eat them really fast, you can always add a little bit more later as well. But this should be perfect. Next up here, I'm moving to my pickled items here. I absolutely love my pickles, so I'm definitely going to be adding them to my charcuterie board. So I'm going to put them to the side here. And next to them as well, we'll go okra. Okra, I have to tell you, is kind of like a 50-50 item, <laughs> at least with my guests. Some people like it, some people can't stand okra, so I try not to overwhelm my charcuterie boards with okras. Oh, come on, boys, stand up. There we go. We're gonna leave it like that. So this is what I was talking about. I don't know if you can tell, if you can tell, if you can see, uh, but there are some drops from pickled items here. So just make sure that they're not touching your crackers. As we are now ready to move to more of the accents on the charcuterie board, I will start with some almonds, and I'm going to place my almonds, my sliced almonds, here in the center. Maybe a little bit more. Again, you could use your regular nuts, whatever you have in the house. And then I will also place my berries, probably next to cheese, because people will more likely eat berries with cheese versus berries and pickles. So if we make any mess during the process, just make sure to clean things up a little bit. I usually have a napkin, there you go. So clean things up a little bit and make sure that everything looks nice. Next up, we have some condiments to add. So here I will be using the jam, the jalapeno jam that I mentioned, and I will be putting some of the honey on the board as well. So I have my spoon ready to go. My jalapeno jam is not going to go next to the raspberries. So let's go ahead and put them next to pickles instead. 
And then again, people will use all of the different tools in order to put all of this onto their crackers or just eat it. And then my honey will go right here. Try to be a little careful with honey. Sometimes I know people like to put a little dish uh, somewhere in the center of their charcuterie boards as well. I don't care if it looks a little messy. To me, it looks crafty that way. So I'm just going to put some, some honey right here. Few last things that we need to complete here with our charcuterie board is to put some of the um, salt and pepper on the side and also put some of our um, decorations to the side as well. So let's start with salt and pepper. As I said, I use this very large granular salt for the charcuterie board just because it's easier for people to pick up. So I'm going to place it right here. And then I will also put some of the crushed, uh, crushed pepper here to the side as well. If you prefer to have a salt and pepper shaker instead, go ahead and use that. Um, I like doing it this way. That's that. Now I have a perfect amount of space right here that's empty right now to put some of the decorations. So I said that I was going with rosemary and cranberries just for the season. So let's see what we can do with it. Maybe something like this to add some greenery. This is, I'm telling you guys, this is why I love charcuterie boards so much, just because you can play with them and really make them into something special. Now putting things like rosemary um, on our charcuterie board actually makes it pretty cool because people can actually add it to their food if they want to. So we're going to leave it like this and put a few of the cranberries around. Oops. Like that. You can put a cinnamon stick somewhere here as well. If you think that your guests will like that, feel free. So whatever floats your boat, whatever looks good, go ahead and do that. So at this point, I think this is everything. I, of course, you know, the longer I look at it, the more I feel like I could add something else to it as well. But I think this looks very, very pretty. And here we go, everyone. It's already dark by the time we finished our charcuterie board here, but really it doesn't take that long in order for us to build it. I was trying to be a little slower uh, to show you how I do mine. So now let's talk wine. So what wine do we actually uh, serve with charcuterie boards? Always keep in mind that you need to realize and understand and decide for yourself whether you're serving your charcuterie board as an appetizer for people or you're serving it as a main dish. So if it's really large and heavy with different foods, meats, and cheeses, then maybe it will be your, um, your main dish and the wine will be a little bit different. So when it comes to red, say if it was your main dish and most people were red wine drinkers in the company, I would suggest something like Chianti to go with it. You really can't go wrong with Chianti or Tempranillo, for instance, uh, when it comes to charcuterie boards that are heavier. Now, if it is an appetizer indeed, in that case, which for the most part, charcuterie boards are appetizers, I would suggest some light white wines to go with them as well. So here, I have a great example being Torontes. This is from Ferlin Winery. I am actually working with Ferlin Winery and I have a discount code for you if you want to try some of their wines. But Torontes is a beautiful white wine from Argentina. It's light and crisp, yet it has a lot of body to it. So it was the discovery of 2020 for me because I've never tried Torontes before and Ferlin Winery was kind enough to send me some of their wines to try. So this wine will go absolutely beautifully with every piece on our charcuterie board. So definitely recommend this one. Uh, the code to Ferlin Winery will be down below as well as their website. I believe that right now they're in a process of redoing their website. So they want you to reach out to them on Instagram through their page, through a direct message and mention my code to get your percentage off. So check them out. The last wine that I'm going to mention for you, and this is my preferred wine with charcuterie boards, something that I will be actually having with this exact charcuterie board tonight is a sparkling wine. So this is a Prosecco from Capo Saldo Winery. I've been working with Capo Saldo Winery as well. They are a great company, extremely affordable and very, very, 
very moderate on the price tag so make sure to check them out you cannot go wrong with drier sparkling wines and your charcuterie boards as appetizers i think they go extremely extremely well together so check out capo saldo as well i will link the website down below as well you can find capo saldo in any store practically so check them out for sure an honorable mention for our drinks here will go to some of the sparkling water so please make sure that you always have some water around and sparkling water or mineral water will go really really great with your charcuterie board just because it looks a little bit fancier so especially if you have people who don't drink or you just want to have some hydration next by then go with regular water or mineral water or sparkling water and then add a slice of lemon for freshness in that water for your guests as well guys and this is it for today's video i hope you now have an idea of what components you need to have on your charcuterie board always try to mix textures mix different products try things out your charcuterie boards are really an adventure it, i can't really come up with a better word than that so definitely go on that adventure try different things see what you've got in the house pair it with different drinks i mean it's so fun and it looks so beautiful perfect for your appetizers on a holiday table for instance so if you like this video please make sure to click that like button down below and if you still haven't subscribed subscribe button is down below as well together with that notification bell for you to click on i shoot videos every single week and i will be very happy to see you here on a regular basis so cheers everyone and until next time i see you